This is the DeSoto National Monument in Manatee County, five miles west of Bradenton, Florida. This uh, memorial celebrates the 1539 landing of Hernando de Soto and the first extensive organized exploration by Europeans of what is now the Southern United States. The memorial includes 26 acres where the Manatee River joins Tampa Bay. Hernando de Soto was born around 1500. He would learn in his youth the skills of horsemanship, reading, writing, and armed combat. But due to the laws of an inheritance, he would have to look outside of his estate for wealth and glory. At the age of 14, Hernando de Soto would leave and enlist in an expedition set for the New World. Well, this is Camp Husida. Here at the Soto National Memorial. And they occupied this for five months while they waited for DeSoto to get back and his trip north and his march north to Tallahassee where he finally ordered this camp to uh, be abandoned and follow him to Tallahassee. So we're going to go inside a little bit more of the area here. This was the camp and uh, they built a replica of it. So it gives you an idea of what it looked like. right on the water, so let's go in and take a look at this thing. Yep. Speak of the devil, there's water right there. In 1537, Hernando de Soto would meet with the Emperor Charles V and impressed him with his tales from the Indies. Charles would later approve De Soto's request to govern and conquer a portion of the New World, a place named La Florida. De Soto would depart Spain in September 1537 to travel to Cuba, where we claim his title as governor and begin forming his expedition to La Florida. In May 1539, DeSoto would depart Havana and sail for the selected bay on Florida's west coast to begin the expedition that would cost him his fortune and his life. What happened to DeSoto was simple. He was charged to find gold, riches, in the new world, and his expedition Costs a lot of money, but gained none. He found no gold and no riches. Unfortunately, the Spanish didn't know what they really had. De Soto was condemned to die and lost his fortune. Wouldn't have done him any good anyway, would it? Now there's not a whole lot to the park. I will say that on holidays and special events and some weekends they have um, actors uh, in costume 
which will explain much of what I just had in a lot more depth. And on certain occasions, they have reenactments. That would be the time uh, you'd really want to come here. But it's a small park, it's a very nice park, very small. Of course, on weekends, it's, uh, or weekdays, it's not that busy, which is a good thing. Weekends are probably a little bit more busy. Of course, you're in a mangrove area also. Mangroves are a good thing. There's nature trails. You meet things along the way. There is also on the, in the park, there is a small museum. And there's not much to that. It is small, there is a little film that plays. But uh, it's interesting. It's usually on somebody on hand in there to give you some details. This is a map that outlines at DeSoto's route from Cuba to Florida all the way up into Georgia and Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama and on. Well, you're probably asking yourself, where is he at now? Well, I'm here at the Florida Maritime Museum in Cortez, Florida. We're gonna go around and take a look at this place. We're way, way on the west side of Bradenton. And this, this is area, is uh, city is Car Cortez. So we're gonna take a look around, see where we go in this place. Long view here. Got some buildings here to look at. And who knows what else? We'll take a look around, see what's going on. Hang in there. Here we go. The Florida Maritime Museum is housed in the 1912 30 brick schoolhouse, one of the many lasting symbols of the community's preservance. Three other historic structures on the museum's grounds all add to the story of this unique place that time seems to have bypassed. As you will see, it is a small museum, and they seem to have just got their feet wet in this. Uh, they're, they're doing a lot of remodeling. The, uh, they're tearing the walls out remodeling the place. Some of the uh, exhibits are, aren't here. They've taken them all down and taken them out. But they're adding to and expanding. And I do believe in a few years this will be a very, very nice museum. It may take two, three years. People are very ha helpful, very friendly. And it is interesting. It's free. That's a good thing. But you do want to donate some money to it. They are trying. 
the um, I would have liked to seen more maritime items such as boats and uh, some of the old fishing boats and everything and I think that's going to come in time. I was kind of surprised at the number of people uh, that were visiting and that's a good thing. That means they're going to get more support. Uh, the museum is a part of Manatee County Clerk of the Circuit Court and Controller's Historical Research Department. This was kind of interesting. Uh, some old newspaper clips from hurricanes past and a display here of uh, the hurricanes. 1926, 1928, 35. So hurricanes are nothing new, and large hurricanes are nothing new either. Probably one of the biggest to ever hit was in the 1800s. I found this quite interesting. You've seen the size of this building from the outside. Uh, there's been storm surges from hurricanes as high as 18 feet. That building's only about 20. They are putting a new roof on that building as they go also. This building back here is not open yet. The building is pretty good, pretty good structure right now, but they have some remodeling to do and uh, uh, to it, to bring it back to where it once was. The grounds are very nice, uh, and they are continuing to work on them. Now I did go back on this path to the culture center. However, the road was blocked, not opened. And I'm not sure where or what the culture center really is back there. And there's that store. Living quarters were above it. There's a museum back there. Now just to the left up here is the fishing village of Cortez. Now I didn't go back into the village and I should have. I'll probably have to go back. Cortez, Florida is one of the last small coastal villages in Florida, located right off Anna Maria Island across the Cortez Bridge. Founded in the 1880s by settlers from North Carolina, you'll find that Cortez still has the same antiquated charm speckled with a few modern amenities. This timeless fishing community is located in the most perfect place possible next to the glittering Gulf of Mexico, completely enveloped in traditional maritime heritage. You won't find it very many high rises here as this city officials retain the old Florida spirit. There are just some small beach bungalows, cottages, and a, and a single family homes along the water's edge. This maritime tradition runs deep through Cortez streets where you will find restored boats proudly displayed. Modest bungalows from the 1920s packed the streets of the village. Fishing has been the primary industry here for decades. The people of Cortez are quite proud of their history and preserving the legacy of this area. It is labeled on the National Registry of Historic Places. As soon as we crossed that bridge back there, we entered Anna Maria Island, and that's where we've been driving through here. Anna Maria Island is a barrier island on Florida's Gulf Coast. It's known for its broad beaches. Anna Maria Pine Avenue is lined with shops, galleries, and eateries. It's a low clay place. It joins a number of small beach towns that are throwbacks in another era. 
There are no high-rises, no chain restaurants, or other signs that paradise has been lost. Anna Marie Island is seven miles long. Anna Marie Island does lack one thing that we all crave, parking. Isn't that true about every place you go in Florida? Lack of parking. But here we are. Island gives you an idea you don't see those high-rises I, lo I love that you can still see the sky you can go up to Clearwater and get great beaches great restaurants but you can't see the sky half the time you sure can't see the ocean I really appreciate this some other of the islands in Florida would uh, could take a book from this. I know Madeira Beach is starting to build up with high rises, and that's a shame. They're losing their character. As we cross the bridge on the right-hand side is where Cortez is. So across this water, you can see Cortez on the other side. Now one thing about Anna Marie Island, like a lot of the islands, particularly during tourist season, traffic. The road on Anna Maria is a two lane. It's not a four lane, so it's two lane, and it's slow moving. If you're in a big hurry, well, maybe somebody else should be driving. It's been a short trip, but it does give me a couple places I'd like to come back to when the uh, Tourist season slows down, so let's get going and we'll head home.